if you have the passion for gardening and love roses and you don't know how to care for them here is the best tip coming up hello happy youtubers marcelina here with you greg stevens here riding shotgun with marcelina and today we got a real exciting vlog especially if you are a rose lover we're going to be talking about the different things of roses that a lot of people don't know about and a lot of mistakes that they're making and we're going to try to help you guys keep from losing all of your plants and all of your hard-earned money buying roses that die the first year you put them in the ground so stay with us but before we begin i want to tell you click that subscribe button down there hit that bell mm -hmm. give it a thumbs up because that really helps our channel the algorithms pick up on that they see that you guys like the video and that helps us out a lot so please hit the subscribe button and Let's continue with the video now. Okay, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> so, All right. We're going to talk about some different things in roses. And I wanted to, we wrote some notes down here because we wanted to, a lot of people are asking questions about it. I can't read your writing, Mark, so you're going to have to, you're going to have to tell me what that <laughs> okay. says. Okay, rose care fall and winter. How uh, are you doing to protect your roses for the winter? That is uh, a mistake we made a couple years ago. We had a little mini uh, cold house, uh -huh. and we didn't get all of our roses in there. That we a lot of them we had been propagating all summer long. We left them out in the winter. We're in zone six B, and mm -hmm. we lost every single one of those roses that year. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we lost them was because of this. Mm -hmm. We didn't get very much snow at all that year, but it got extremely cold. Well, people think that oh, the snow is going to harm the roses. Actually, no. The snow is like a blanket, and it covers that and insulates the roots of the plant. Mm -hmm. That's what you got to protect is the roots, not not the canes that are above the mm -hmm. ground. Because roses. if you have a lot of snow, your roses will be okay. But if mm -hmm. it's cold and windy and no snow, mm -hmm. you're going to lose a lot of your your plants. So roses have different uh, zones. Different zones. Mm -hmm. You got to know. When you go to buy a rose, whether you're going online or you're going to the nurseries, look on the card and it'll tell you what zone it is. And you've got to mm -hmm. know what zone you're in. If you live in a zone three or four and you buy a zone six or seven rose, it's not going to make it unless you bring it indoors during the winter time. Mm -hmm. And it happens to us all the time. Uh, yeah, because we always... Because we love, uh, we love to grow different oh, roses. The one, the, remember the black Baccara rose that we had? Oh my God. It's almost black. It's, it's, it's a, a deep velvet rose. reddish uh, maroon black rose. But the zone of that rose was seven, eight, eight. I don't know, but we bought it from, we bought it from a nursery in Canada. They shipped it to us, and when I got them, they were pathetic looking, and I called them, and they said, we had a really hard time with the black Baccara this year. And mm -hmm. they were, they just, they made it one year, the last of one year, we couldn't get a single propagation off of this rose to save our life. They, every mm -hmm. single one of them would die before they would root, and that's that was horrible. So you gotta know your zone of your roses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you, live, if you live in zone four, you would not buy a rose that it is zone eight because it would be you know a problem that rose won't survive not at all now uh, a lot of people questioning like when are we going to prepare our roses for the winter well now now <laughs> now <laughs> starting now so yeah. get ready with your roses and uh, make sure that you protect them how do you protect them i in my in our roses i mound uh, soil so what you're gonna do is to mound this well. I will talk this uh, again in my next video on how you know to do it. How far up should you? So mound? you mound this soil six inches high, and make sure that you cover, especially if you have the grafting. If you can talk about what's different mm -hmm. between grafting right, right. and uh, root on root, so you have to protect that crown like six inches high. Then add another extra layer of compost, or you can use hay. Uh, sawdust, but you said sawdust is so not, sawdust is too light. It's going to blow away. You could probably away. mix it with some some type of compost or something like that. Mm -hmm. But make sure you're not using sawdust that is from treated wood because mm -hmm. that has a copper and some other chemicals in there that, uh, that may not be good for the plant. But I would say hay is better. Hay is good. Leaf compost is good as if it's composted up. Uh, I, we, we were talking about wood chips this morning. Yeah, wood chips. What's is that good or bad? What did we well, decide? Well, most most gardeners use wood chips to cover roses, 
and it is good too but the problem about chips if it is wet it creates that too much moisture and then it might cause damage to the stem of the roses i would say just if you can get a hay it's better if you have a hay you, can, you mean straw no oh, not hay straw, straw. Yeah. yeah we don't have hay uh we feed that to the horses and the cows <laughs> Straw, straw, straw yeah. is a byproduct from from harvesting wheat uh, mm -hmm. or oats. I mean, um, so the other thing we were talking about is the different kind of roses. There's mm -hmm. grafted roses, and then there's own root roses. Own root. And I want to show you the difference. That is the own root. This is an own root rose. Inside. You can't really see down inside of here, it's but it's just like the cane is just coming right up out of the soil, and this is a, a beautiful little rose. It's ebb tide. Ebb tide. And then you have... On rope is grown from cuttings. Grown from a cutting, And right? then here's the grafted. Or if you're lucky enough from seeds. First, that is the grafted. And this is a grafted rose. You it's can see the crown now. down it's here. It's been uh, five years, more than five years now. And you see all this uh, dead wood. This needs to be trimmed off of here. There's only one cane and um, I got I have my doubts that this is from the uh, the graft. This is coming up from the rootstock. Mm -hmm. So this is probably a Dr. Huey, which is one of the plants that they use in the Northern Hemisphere for the uh, propagation of grafting. And the reason why they do that is because the Dr. Huey is a very strong disease resistant rose mm -hmm. in the Northern Hemisphere. It can withstand colder temperatures a lot better than some of the plants that they're grafting. Now, so what is your recommendation? My recommendation is to always get an, a root that has its own roots. It's growing from the air layering or maybe even from a seed, but the, the grafted is what you're going to find in your nurseries and most of the places mm -hmm. online are gonna be selling grafted roses. And what they do is they take the root stock and they take a little uh, bud and slice it and put it in that, in that graft and then mm -hmm. it starts to shoot. When it starts growing, then they prune and cut off the uh, the, the, the root stock mm -hmm. and then it becomes its own rose and you'll mm -hmm. see the scarring that big knot at the bottom which they call a crown mm -hmm. and that is where the uh, rose was propagated at at mm -hmm. that location but with this one is, this uh, is an own root rose you don't see any grafts on there it's just the roots and the stock tree. this lives longer the Grafted rose is only going to live about five years. Five years. That's the problem of having, you don't have a long Scribes, years of enjoyment of your roses. And if you want to have a long lifespan of your roses, get a, you know, own rope. Yeah. While we're there, we're going and, to talk. Uh, you're sealing this, are you? You're sealing what, this? What is that one? This is ebb tide. Ebb tide. This is a very beautiful uh, And it purple. is healthy. Look at it's how healthy rose. it is. Yeah, that's 20 bucks, 20, okay. 25 bucks for you that. You can one. check the link below, guys, if you yeah. are looking for roses. This is a good time of the year mm -hmm. to uh, to plant roses if you get the right zone. Mm -hmm. But before we go any further, we want to talk to you about the next subject, which is pest control. Mm -hmm. And pest control, man, roses attract we a plethora of insects and diseases. They get black spot. Uh, they get powdery mildew, mm -hmm. and then they they love to attract the aphids. Not so much the mealybugs, but more mm -hmm. aphids. We control the mealybugs. Yeah, mealybugs. Really, you know? So, what I want to show you here is is this, which is Azatec Plus. Mm -hmm. Azatec Plus is the best solution that we have found for curing and killing pests, preventing them from even landing on your plant. Worked on Japanese beetles, works on aphids, works on mealybugs. Uh, mm -hmm. It will dissolve a slug in a matter of minutes before your eyes and turn I it should, into I water. Should, I should show yesterday, <laughs> you know, the mealybug. I was, uh, no, not mealybug, the slug. So slug. I, I found a slug I, eating one of my plants and I put in a, in a bottle and spray the, the slugs. And I was just observing the slugs turning to start foaming. And uh, then I sprayed it again, and the coating of the slugs was just eradicating. Now, how you want to use this, you want to keep it warm at around 65 to 70 degrees temperature all the time. Because 
This contains neem oil inside. One of the key mm -hmm. ingredients is neem oil. If it gets cold, it begins to solidify. So it has an emulsifier inside of it to help keep it dispersed, at, but you want to keep it warm. That's mm -hmm. why we put it in a black bottle. So when you're working outside, it sits outside, it draws the sunlight and keeps it warm for you. Mm -hmm. How you use it, shake it up really good. Here's and thinking. then you take it like this and you spray. Hold on, hold on. Okay. I always do that. Shake it up, spray your plant like this. And then also you want to make sure you get underneath the plant because that's where all those little boogers like to hide. They like to hide underneath this. And as a precaution, you want to do this either in the morning or in the evening time. Now the other thing is, a lot of your light colored roses, like this particular one, this is a cherry parfait, but in your yellow and your uh, pink roses, thrips like to get inside the buds. Just take this Azatec and spray it on the inside of there, and that will won't hurt. No, it doesn't hurt your bees or anything, but it will get rid of those thrips, and that bud will continue to blossom mm -hmm. beautifully for you. Azatec Plus. It's new on the market. You'll be on Amazon very shortly, but right now you can buy this at cashyourgreens.com. That's cashyourgreens, all one word, dot com. You see it up here above the screen. I'll put it up here for you. Click it on there. It runs about $17.99 plus shipping. And we we're trying to work to find a cheaper way of shipping it because it is a 32 ounce bottle and it is a little heavy especially if you're shipping it across the country but mm -hmm. you won't find this in your big box stores not yet but the big box stores don't have anything that can match the performance of Azatec Plus mm -hmm. because what they're putting in there is hydrophobic neem oil which means water it's it doesn't work it mm -hmm. doesn't work it mm -hmm. must have the azadaractin that's what this Azatec means, Azadaractin mm -hmm. technology. This stuff really works. Okay. It, it, that's Back. why it's expensive because of the Azadaractin. Azadaractin is expensive, yes. Now, getting back to our roses here. You want to try, you know, how, how that one, how it's controlled? Um, no, that's okay. We, we, they can't really see that right now, so it's not a good okay. time to do that. What's next on your list there, Ma? All right, so we already, so... You already did try the fertilizer. Fertilizer. Now, how often do you fertilize your roses? When do you stop the fertilization? So the fertilization should be done in spring. Spring, spring time? and summer. And do you want to use more of a nitrogen or phosphorus in the spring? Nitrogen. Nitrogen would be higher in the spring because you want that foliage to increase in plants because, mm -hmm. because leaves are responsible in manufacturing that food and energy. This is one of our favorite fertilizers right here this is Captain Jack's mm -hmm. all-purpose and as you can see on here it is a 20 20 20 that means it's 20 percent nitrogen 20 percent uh, potassium and 20 percent phosphorus mm -hmm. this is got everything in there and this is a this is a real good one this one will really make your plants this explode. one is great when it is before the end of fall because it this one here as you can see this is a sea grow mm -hmm. it's a 426 26 this is lower in nitrogen, so what it's going to do is not produce so much vegetation for your roses, mm -hmm. but it's going to cause great root growth and it's going to make it flower. That's what this last number does. This makes it flower. This is for your roots and, and uh, other issues, but this is Potassium. the one you need that for that's the, going to, to help your plants trees. grow and make your leaves dark green and I'm nice and healthy. for them for the winter. Yeah, for the winter, you don't want to give anything that has high nitrogen. Mm -hmm. You want mm -hmm. to cut that back on that and go for more root protection. Mm -hmm. All right, so you need that. Now pruning. Pruning. Go ahead, Mon. Run with that one. <laughs> so now you might be asking, like, when I'm going to prune my roses? Well, TB pruning should be done in spring because you want that, you know, taking out those uh, dead twigs and dead branches resulting from the, uh, you know, winter. That is your job is to prune them heavily. Now in summer you need to deadhead the plants so that it creates continuous what is bloom. Heading? Deadheading like you take out, you know, removing the removing spent, rose. spent rose. And you cut it down to the first mm -hmm. to the first so node. To the first node so it stimulates that new growth and then the new growth will create new flower. Now 
at the end of fall approaching to winter you should not be pruning so heavily i would say avoid uh, heavy pruning in why know, is in that fall because it will create a huge flush of new growth then the plant would be spending pruning, too much energy pruning your roses then, yeah. in the late fall like that stimulates growth again mm -hmm. that you're telling the plant it's got to go up there and start healing and growing again you, you don't want that you want the plants uh, energy to be to done prepare, into the yeah, roots. To prepare in a stage. But unless, you know, unless there is a concern of your roses that might have this, uh, you know, bad storm that the ice would, what is that, the snow mm -hmm. would drop in your pane and then break the pane, then maybe that's, you know, you have to cut it or hide it, secure it properly. Because what is really now? Let's talk about what really kills the roses in the winter. Because other people say, "Oh my God, my roses died." You know what kills? We had that long time ago. I think we talked yes. about that already. What kills yeah. the roses? The cold wind. The cold wind. The cold wind, wind, not the snow. Frozen, not the snow. It's the cold wind and the freezing rain. Freezing rain. Yeah. So if there is a change in temperature, so if you notice that in your area is having a severe storm like you are going to experience a, a frost night then what that can, is what can people do though in the northern hemisphere that have that kind of weather what can they do other than just piling up a bunch of uh, compost or soil up on top of the uh, the crown of the plant is there anything else they can do to protect the roses some of the people mm -hmm. the that's a lot of work though they protect with burlap to cover yeah. the roses with burlap and tied it. Yeah. That's a lot of work for me. It's a lot of work. Yeah, I, but if you got an expensive road, you paid, you know, seventy-five, eighty, a hundred dollars for it. That burlap sack costs two bucks. And I will put in the greenhouse. Well, yeah, <laughs> or a lot inside of your have or inside your home. <laughs> <laughs> or you buried it and you planted them in the ground. You're gonna, you don't want to dig it up. Oh, if you planted the yeah. ground, then that is burlap the sack is is a very good method. Burlap, yeah. So you just cover that with burlap, tied it, and uh, it's secured. The plant, and you said that it has to have some wind protection. You know, wind yes. Protection. If you, if you have your, your rose, you're bearing them and planting them in the ground. You don't want to put them on the side of the house that's from the west. That's mm -hmm. where all the cold wind is coming from, the north northwest. You want to put your roses in some type of a area where your house can block that wind from hitting that plant. And you'll always notice the area that's protected from the wind. Your roses are going to look the best. Mm -hmm. They're going to look their best. And uh, stay away from the northwest side of the house mm -hmm. unless you have it protected by shrubs or bushes or something like that. Mm -hmm. so, so are you talking about floribanda and hybrid? Yeah, a lot of people between? don't know the difference. They think a rose is a rose is a rose, and that's not <laughs> true. Uh, that's the furthest from the truth. This you is have floribanda. all different kind of roses, but that's not a good example this time of the year. A floribanda is a rose that has a lot of flushes of blooms on it. Um, that's my favorite. My favorite are full fuller bundas. I try to stay away from hybrid teas. Unfortunately, she likes a hybrid tea, so we I have to be it, a happy you know? ground. A hybrid tea is just a long single rose growing on a stem like the Mr. Lincoln and the Olympiads. Those are some of our favorite you know why, long stems. You know why I like hybrid, uh, no, hybrid tea? You because you have less roses, you have no, to deadhead? No, the rose is kissable. <laughs> oh, kissable. Mm, I won't even go you there. You give one uh, stem of rose and... Well, that's true, but you only get one or two or three flowers at the same time with a floribunda, I could have 20. It's just a better showpiece. Plum perfect is beautiful as floribunda. Yes, yeah, and the, the yellow, what's the yellow one we have over there? Uh, uh, Soaring the Glory. Yeah, and the Julia Child, oh, mm, that's a beautiful floribunda. yellow floribunda. Those are nice. Then you can have all other, you have your climbers and you have your little mini roses and stuff. I don't care about that mini stuff. They have ground you cover roses. You don't care about climbing, huh? Climbing roses. Climbing, I, li I like the, uh, what's the one we got over there? The yeah. one yellow or the yeah, red one? Yeah, we have a blaze. Blaze. Blaze, blaze is nice. Blaze, I couldn't believe blaze is blaze. very Our blaze this year was phenomenal. It's a very uh, survival, you know, yeah. in winter. It's a strong rose. Strong rose. So that one we have climbing up on top of our trellis. It's, it's it was in really the basket well. and I said, oh my goodness. So I transferred it in yeah. there because, you know. Okay, you're getting off subject here. All right. All right, what else we got? Anything else on there, Vat? So uh, that, that's it. So just uh, in conclusion, so the best step to grow in roses, you grow, if you grow in the ground, you need to fertilize 
heavily in, in spring with a lot of nitrogen. Now in the summer, cut, cut, okay. off, cut off your nitrogen and then introduce your phosphorus and potassium. At the end of the fall, then you have to introduce that high in potassium because you want that, you, you are helping the plant to, you know, in the dormancy. So that in spring you check your plant, check your roses every single day. A rose mm -hmm. is not a plant that you can plant and forget about it. Mm -hmm. Plant roses do need somebody who really loves roses because you go out and take a look at this rose today and unless you're using Azatec or something comparable to it, which I don't know where it is, you look at it today, it looks good. I can come out here tomorrow and this whole stem would be covered with aphids. And you're like, oh my God, where did those come from? You got to check them every single day. Just look at them. Look at the bottom side of the leaf. I always take the leaf, I flip them up, I look underneath them. If the bottom side is good, then the plant is good. Mm -hmm. Check that, that's real important. A neighbor prone in the winter. Don't prune your oh, plant. Oh, never. Just let it be, you know, let it be so yeah. it turns dormant. This also uh, protects against black spot. Mm -hmm. You spray that's that, a, you, yeah. no, you spray yeah, that right with now. Alzatec because you want to protect the plants from pests and And your best time to do it diseases. is right after a heavy rainstorm because rain is what splashes on the ground, splashes up on the leaves, and that's what spreads the, the fungus, the black mm -hmm. spot. And uh, the rain, unfortunately, will wash us off after uh, probably one or two light rain, heavy rains. You gotta treat at least once a week. Mm -hmm. Don't don't let it go without that. Mm -hmm. we, if I don't have this, I feel like I'm naked in the garden. When we're out in the garden, we have one of these in our hand as we're walking through the garden and we set it down. Mm -hmm. This is like uh, this is like having your your gun in the your gun in your holster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta have this stuff. Yeah, I always I I, I go through tons of bottles of acetic glass so because. Then you you'll find Good. certain mm -hmm. certain roses will attack the pests more so than the others. Mm -hmm. Certain roses will also attack black spot more so than others. Some are more disease mm -hmm. resistant. Get yourself your own root roses as opposed to getting a uh, a grafted rose. If I get a grafted rose, she's pruning the habit to propagate it to get rid of that grafted mm -hmm. rose. And then we have our own rose. That we can grow and not have to worry about uh, <laughs> the plant dying and the and the uh, the rootstock coming up out of the ground and mm -hmm. doing that. So, like I said, up north they use the Dr. Huey as the rootstock for the northern states, and down in the southern states they use Fortuniana, which is a rootstock that is more resistant to hot and humid weather. So mm -hmm. the, the 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 Dr. Huey is a really it's a pretty rose. It's mm -hmm. a it's a reddish. Uh, maroon rose. It's a smaller rose. It's only about that big compared to the Mr. Lincoln's or about like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a beautiful rose, but uh, we we actually have a couple Dr. Hueys where the grafted part of the rose died after a cold winter, but the Dr. Huey survived and we just let the, the shoots come out of the mm -hmm. ground and let it continue to bloom and grow. That's why they graft that rose to a different root stuff because the rose, the original rose, is weaker. Uh, it's weaker. It's weak. and then you know, it has to survive. So, it so that's all I have for you guys today. And uh, root and care, and rose care, not root care, but rose care. Continue rooting. Yeah, continue rooting. <laughs> and we will see you in the next video. A peace. <laughs>